It's been a rough week for scrapbookers and paper crafters, and I wanna talk about it. If you haven't heard the news, Close to My Heart will close its doors forever after 30 years in the industry. And this comes off the back of Heartfelt Creations, which closed last year, another huge loss to our community. It really does seem to me that the golden age of scrapbooking is over. You know, I remember a time when there was a scrapbook store almost on every corner. There was so much choice. Even the big box craft stores had aisles and aisles of supplies. So much choice and so many options for paper crafters. My big box store now really only has two aisles and two brands, American Crafts and their generic brand, which is Crafter's Choice. It seems that scrapbooking today is totally different to what it was 20 years ago. This latest news really has me thinking. So I've done some research. I wanna share a couple of graphs with you. These are from Google Trends and I've popped in there scrapbooking, scrapbook, paper crafts and card making, just so that we can compare them. This one is for Australia, which is where I am. This one is for USA. And this one is a worldwide version. As you can see in all of them, there is a downward trend. The bubble certainly has burst. And this has got me thinking a lot about our industry as a whole. So what happened? Well, uh, we get to blame the economy first because obviously as budgets get tighter, uh, people review them and things like hobbies and crafts are really the first to go. Pretty paper does not feed the family and it doesn't keep the electricity on. This of course flowed on to local stores where their expenses were rising and their sales were decreasing and many of them had to close. Now with those store closures came some pretty big sales. The stores were liquidating their inventory and many creatives were after a good deal. Many of them bought way more than they actually needed and that kind of made the problem worse. In their attempts to get a good deal, they've now found themselves in a place where they have so many supplies that they can no longer support the stores that were left. And we're actually still feeling the effects of that today. That did open the door for online shopping and the stores that have been able to adapt and cut costs and build an online presence have been able to weather that storm. But there is one thing that online stores will always struggle with and that's community. You know, there's something really special about how the online stores built community, how they weren't just customers, but they became family and lifelong friends. The stores built crops and events around the community. It wasn't just about selling the supplies. It's now so much harder to bring local crafters together because they just don't have that local store that connects them. Think about even online. There's not really online crops that are independent of either a brand or a business. All of the crops and things that you see in the online space are based around businesses or brands. Any of the crafters who did not move online were left behind. And I've seen that here in my local community. Many of the crafters I now create with are not local to me. We do our creating and our crops all online virtually. Those local ladies who went to the store are now not able to be motivated and encouraged by each other. Think of it like a fire. So if you have a single amber, it's gonna burn out really, really quickly. But all of the ambers inside a fire, well, they keep each other warm and they keep each other going. And that fire burns for a lot longer. I think we've really underestimated the value of community in our industry. And today, the business and brands that are doing the best are the ones that are working super hard to keep their community strong. 
During this transitional time, we also saw a decrease in the number of manufacturers and brands available to us. Many of them closed doors or were uh, bought up by bigger brands like American Crafts. It seems to me that the only thing that hasn't declined is the number of supplies available to purchase. We're still seeing massive scrapbook collections 48 different pieces of pattern paper in a single line. We're seeing collection after collection being released. There really is just so much product out there. Maybe it's the minimalist in me, but this all seems to me to be very unsustainable. Crafters have overbought. You see it all the time in craft room tours rooms filled with supplies that will never ever get used. And then you also see it in the movement towards decluttering, organization and minimalism. Did the word de-stash even exist 20 years ago? I don't think so. There's also the question of what do we do with the pages themselves? Many of us have been creating for 20 and 30 years and over that time, we've made quite a few pages. I personally have actually thrown some away. I know some of you will be horrified by that, but I just can't keep them all. And many I was creating earlier on for manufacturers and brands that I was working with. So they weren't projects that I really truly loved. So I have over time gone through and reviewed the pages that I'm willing to keep. I've always created for myself and never for anyone else. And I've never ever expected my children or family to hold on to layouts after my passing. I know many creatives have struggled with that. They're trying to create family heirlooms. And I do wonder about the younger generation and whether they're gonna to wanna to keep these projects. Part of the solution for all of that was digital scrapbooking. Yes, it did become pretty popular, but it had a flaw. Digital scrapbooking is not the same as regular scrapbooking. Some crafters transitioned, but many did not. In this digital age, photos stopped being printed and people started sharing directly to Facebook and Instagram. It was so much faster than digital scrapbooking and to many achieved the same result. So essentially, digital scrapbooking got replaced with social media. I very recently asked in my community how everybody got started scrapbooking. And it's, it's actually been so lovely to read and hear about the stories. But one thing stood out, and that was that many, many of them started scrapbooking in that golden age, so 20 to 30 years ago. So with all that said, I feel like we're in a place now where the crafters that are left are the ones that truly enjoy the process. They're not so much about actually memory keeping, but they're more in it for the creative joy that this craft brings and the community. They are the crafters who've really connected into the community, who've made lifelong friends. And guess what? Those are the creatives that will actually move our industry forward. Those are the people that will ensure that it does not die. I'm already seeing this with the close to my heart news. The ladies who are makers who have YouTube channels have rallied. They're adapting already. They're sharing that they're not giving up their craft. They're not stopping their YouTube channels. They're just gonna change how that looks. Many of them are seeing it as an opportunity to work with new brands, to change up their channel and the way that they share projects. And I love them for that. So while many may say, yes, scrapbooking is dead, paper craft is dead, people don't craft anymore, I'm a glass half full kind of girl and I disagree. I actually think it's not dead, it's just changing and it's just evolving and growing in different ways. I've got some new graphs to show you. All I've done is change up the search away from web search onto YouTube search. This is Australia, this is USA, and this is worldwide. 
these graphs show a different story. Pay attention to the paper craft line. There's growth there. Every day I see creatives sharing their ideas, inspiration and love of paper craft. And I love this community. If you love it too, and I'm guessing that you do, then it's up to us to work together to keep that fire burning, to keep encouraging, supporting and loving each other. So is scrapbooking dead? No. Is it thriving? Well, maybe not right now, but it is alive, but it's up to you and I to keep it going. So share your love for paper with a neighbor, a friend, a work colleague, someone from your church or community group. Share the love that you get from creating with paper with them and welcome them into our community. If you see a creative pouring their heart and soul out into this community, support them however you can. And if you'd like to support me, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel and watch this video next. I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, bye.